here today, can I begin by also acknowledging that we're meeting this morning on the traditional lands of the Ghana people and we acknowledge their ongoing spiritual relationship with this precious land. I'd like to acknowledge my friend, the Honourable Karen Andrews, MP, Minister for Industry, Science and Technology, Senator, the Honourable David Fawcett, Nicole Flint, the Federal Member for Boothby, Mr Stephen Patterson, MP, Member for Morford, Dr Megan Clark, my favourite Australian, Head of the Australian <laughs> Space Agency, and Anthony Murphy, and all of her team who are here, Professor Carolyn McMillan, the Chief Scientist uh, for South Australia, Dr Andy Thomas, AO, Australia's first astronaut, who is sitting right here in the front row. <laughs> fantastic lineup of speakers that we have, uh, including Luca Del Monte from the uh, European Space Agency and many of our panellists who are here today, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to invite you, sorry, not to invite you, but to welcome you to the 8th Space Forum here in Adelaide. There are nearly 1,000 people who are registered for this event. What more evidence is needed to show how quickly the space sector in Australia is growing? Some of you are leaders, others are entrepreneurs and founders of innovative companies. And let's not forget those of you who work behind the scenes, the engineers, the researchers, the scientists. The one thing that unites us all is our passion and our enthusiasm to unlock the full potential of Australia's space industry. By coming together to share ideas and connect, you are opening new opportunities for collaboration and further enhancing our national space endeavour. It's marvellous to see this forum has gone from strength to strength. Once again, we've received enormous support from the broader Australian space economy. I'd like to particularly thank all of our first-time sponsors, including Aerospace Australia, Japan's ULVAC and also Boeing. Your support is another fantastic indication of the momentum behind our space industry. My government took office just 18 months ago in 20, early 2018 with a strong commitment to build on the progress being made in the space sector. In fact, I decided to appoint myself as the space industry minister in South Australia. <laughs> we remain determined to put South Australia firmly on the global map as leaders in space entrepreneurship creating a cohesive entrepreneurial ecosystem and an environment that nurtures and inspires innovators to take risks and to activate their ideas is at the very heart of our policies and our actions. To support this goal, we are investing more than $400 million to build a thriving precinct at Lot 14, right in the centre of Adelaide. Two years ago, a major teaching hospital, now one of the most exciting innovation <coughs> precincts in the entire country. <coughs> and with anchor tenant, tenant Stone and Chalk at the helm, Lot 14 is growing into an entrepreneurship uh, incubator, uh, set up, uh, scale up, a startup and scale up uh, precinct, the likes of which we haven't seen before. Lot 14 is already home to the Australian Space Agency, Mission Control, the SmartSat Cooperative Research Centre, and the Space Discovery Centre. Lot 14 is really and truly on track to becoming the nation's premier innovation precinct. By the end of this year, we think that we'll have 900 people back working on that site in high growth sectors like space and defence and machine learning, robotics, and also the creative industries. Just recently, we were really delighted to welcome Neumann Space to the growing cluster of high-tech companies at the precinct. It's common knowledge that collaboration leads to higher impact innovations. When people work more closely together, they see things in a new light as they are driven to think outside the box and leverage existing ideas to form new ones. And that is exactly and precisely what we're doing on Lot 14, creating those opportunities for spontaneous interaction between people who might be in the space sector, the defence sector, machine learning, robotics, ag tech, researchers, undergraduates, postgraduates, mentors, venture capitalists, everybody on that side, not curated by the government, 
not curated by the university sector, but by our very first chief entrepreneur in South Australia, Jim Wally, one of the founders of Nova Systems in this state. We couldn't be more excited. And one example of this spontaneous collaboration was the collaboration which has now been established between Neumann uh, and Innovore Technologies. And this will really, uh, I think, create a great opportunity to develop cutting edge space technology and strengthen Australia's sovereign space capability. Our vision to make South Australia the leading centre for space entrepreneurship is attracting global investment and international players to our state. Over the past few months, our space industry has celebrated a number of major achievements and milestones. These include the World First Technology Innovation Hackathon, the Gravity Challenge, driven by Amazon Web Services and Deloitte, occurring right here in Adelaide. Fleet Space Technologies, earlier this month, raising another $11 million in capital from national and global investors, fast-tracking that company's very ambitious plan to launch a constellation of more than 100 nanosatellites into low Earth orbit. Southern Launches, Polar Rocket, sorry, Polar Rocket Launch Facility at Whalers Way, just south of Port Lincoln, being granted major development status, recognising the economic importance of this launch site to South Australia and the broader uh, space community. And in another major milestone for Southern Launch's project, I'm pleased to announce today that Southern Launch is to officially sign an agreement with its first customer, Perigee, uh, aerospace. Perigee Aerospace is a leading South Korean orbital launch vehicle manufacturer. By the end of 2021, Perigee will launch one of the world's smallest vehicles, Blue Whale 1, carrying satellites into sun synchronous orbit from the Southern Launch's South Australian facility, marking yet another important investment in our space sector. I'm also delighted to announce today that leading US space company Titan Will, be a, will establish a nanosatellite manufacturing facility here in South Australia. This is another huge vote of confidence for this rapidly growing sector in South Australia. It adds to a vibrant ecosystem now comprising almost 80 companies and organisations. Tyback has already made deep connections with our local space industry. It is a member of the SmartSat CRC, first customer, of the Nova Systems Ground Station at Peterborough and has established a unique partnership with Miriota. Thank you to the representatives from both Tyback and Perigee who have come a long way to be with us here today, in fact a long way to be with us here this week. And finally, can I commend the Federal Government and can I say thank you very much to the Minister who is with us uh, here today. We couldn't have been more excited uh, than to see those images coming back from the US recently with our Prime Minister, with President Trump, announcing a $150 million investment uh, into supporting the NASA lunar mission uh, to get to the moon by 2024 and then to go beyond. And to have $150 million now dedicated uh, to making sure that Australia can participate uh, in terms of areas uh, like robotics and mining and producing uh, componentry to different lunar uh, options, we couldn't be more excited. Thank you to each and every one of you who has a passion for the space sector, to the students uh, who are here today. Uh, we're going to be working very hard. This sector is going to be working very hard for you to create fantastic career options for you uh, every day into the future. This is a very exciting time to be in the space sector. This is a very exciting time to be in Adelaide. Welcome, and I hope you really enjoy your wonderful conference today. Thank you.